Yellowstone supervolcano. Earthquakes reveal a volcanic system that is six times bigger than we believed. This is by Robin White, PhD researcher, volcanology, UCL. Conversation uh, seismologists have discovered the massive magma reservoir beneath Yellowstone supervolcano in Wyoming that suggests its volcanic system could be more than 5.6 times larger than was previously believed. Although it was already known that Yellowstone had one magma reservoir about 5 to 16 kilometers down or 3 to 10 miles below the surface, the new study published in Science reveals another much larger reservoir sitting directly below the first, located 20 to 50 kilometers down, that's 12 to 30 miles below the surface. Kindly support my Patreon account because YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Now the chamber was 3 to 10 miles down. The reservoir is from 12 to 30 miles below the surface. This reservoir is thought to have a volume of around 46,000 cubic kilometers compared to a volume of around 10 cubic kilometers for the shallow reservoir. So it's uh, four and a half times more. To make their discovery, scientists analyzed the vibrations made by earthquakes that passed beneath the volcano. The technique not only sheds light on this volcano's potentially life-threatening eruption, it could also help us understand other volcanoes, such as the Calbuco, which is currently, well, which was uh, previously, or since uh, a little while ago, erupting in Chile. Yellowstone's volcano is composed of an immense volcanic crater known as the caldera. It's more than 44 miles in length, or 70 kilometers, most of which lies underneath Yellowstone National Park. The volcano rarely erupts lava, as it did about 70,000 years ago, but the magma lying beneath the surface gives rise to spectacular geothermal features such as the geysers and colorful hot springs. We know that Yellowstone has 60% of all the world's geysers. Now the last large eruption at Yellowstone, a super eruption, was about 640,000 years ago. It ejected about 1,000 cubic kilometers or 240 cubic miles of volcanic material. This cataclysm created the Yellowstone caldera. To get an idea of the scale of this, the largest eruption in recorded history, Mount Tambora in 1815, erupted about a sixth of that. Now, magma reservoirs are thought to occur beneath most volcanoes, and they play a crucial role in the dynamics of eruptions. But they are too deep and conditions within them too extreme to be measured directly, so volcanologists have to infer information about them using other means such as measuring seismic waves. These waves travel more slowly when they pass through molten rock, and accordingly the group were able to use the velocities of the earthquake waves to infer the presence of a large deep zone of partially molten material. And the carbon footprint explained the magma stored in the deeper reservoir probably does not cause eruptions at Yellowstone directly. Instead, it likely acts as a feeder for the smaller, shallower reservoir, which is the ultimate source of volcanoes' catastrophic eruptions. Scientists had suspected the existence of a second magma reservoir at Yellowstone for some time, but this new evidence is among the strongest support of the theory to date. The discovery of this second magma reservoir may also help to explain the mysterious features of the Yellowstone volcano, its carbon footprint. And here we go. I hope you're sitting down. Carbon dioxide gas is commonplace at volcanoes. It gives off, uh, it's given off by the rising magma. But Yellowstone's output, which is about 45,000 tons of carbon dioxide every single day, 45,000 tons of CO2 every day, was too high to explain to be explained by a single magma, magma reservoir, but according to the study's authors, the presence of the new reservoir is enough to account for the volcano's CO2 flux. That's how they found the reservoir. It was so big because of the tremendous amount of carbon dioxide 
being emitted every day from Yellowstone. So if the high resolution seismic imaging technique used in the study could be repeated at other volcanoes whose deep structure is poorly understood, such as Calbuco volcano in Chile, volcanologists might eventually be able to understand how such eruptions take place. The first stirrings of volcanic eruptions happen far below the surface, and if researchers can emulate the findings at Yellowstone for other volcanoes, it can only tell us more about the risk they pose. This is on the conversation, Creative Commons, by UCL PhD researcher in volcanology, Robin Wiley. Please leave your comments. Thank you.